Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. We are about to go into the uh, commander's tent and have a chat with uh, Queen Galfrey herself, as we have been appointed the Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. After we've done that, we'll uh, do some uh, leveling up of our uh, main character and companions, and we'll also uh, go and buy a couple of key important items that we need and sell off some stuff. But let's get into the commander's tent and see what the queen has to say. The queen greets you with a stare. She has dropped the pompous air with which she just announced the Fifth Crusade. The face of the ruler of Mendev appears calm and thoughtful. She has made her move and now awaits her opponent's reply. Commander. I am satisfied with the troop review, but I do not expect they will be sufficient for the task. You will have to prove yourself a shrewd leader and hire the necessary troops with the provided funds. I have chosen a target for your campaign, and that target is Dresden, our lost outpost within the world wound. The Sword of Valor was kept there, a banner that was once carried by Iomade herself. Our greatest relic was lost when the city fell. I should make one thing clear from the start. The Sword of Valor is no mere symbol, but a powerful weapon against demons. The holiness of the banner weakens them, and robs them of one of their most dangerous abilities, teleportation. A forced march to Dresden awaits you. The Sword of Valor is kept somewhere within the Citadel. The demons probably think it's a hunting trophy. Its recovery is just as important as retaking the city itself. I hope the task is clear. I'm sending two specialists to help you, along with the soldiers. A historian, Nura Dendewar, and a cleric, Sozial Danik. One of the famous inquisitors of the Church of Iomade also wants to talk to you. The Honorable Leota, whom everyone calls Hawkblade. I do not wish to keep you, Commander. The matter I must discuss with you is extremely important, but it is not directly related to the Crusade. You no doubt wish to meet your new comrades and speak with Her Majesty. Therefore, I shall leave you now. But I ask that you seek me out in the camp at your earliest convenience. Hi! Listen, it's amazing here. It's like I'm in a ballad. There's knights in shining armor, deadly dangers, glorious feats. We are going to show those demons! I'm so tired of sitting in a library reading books about history. It's time I took part in it! <laughs> Mm hmm I'm glad to help our cause, Commander. If you have some time later, I'd like to speak with you further. You'll have plenty of time to talk. You're the Knight Commander's people now, his trusted advisors and companions. Now then, will you please leave us? Erebus, you can go too. When we met at the Defender's Heart, I never imagined you'd make him the commander of the new crusade. Some actions may be deemed bold, or even extreme, and beyond those, there are some you might call the Queen's last resort. I am not a simple monarch. I am at war with the Abyss, a war which has lasted over a hundred years. I cannot allow myself the luxury of caution. In you, I see a chance, and I am willing to stake everything on it. However, you cannot blame me for putting you in charge of the Crusade. I only formalized what had already happened in the hearts and minds of many. People spoke of the power that descended upon you and helped you save the Wardstones from corruption and total destruction. Word of this feat quickly spread far beyond the borders of Mendev. There was no other person who could better fit the role of Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. Did you know that the souls of angels from heaven are confined in the Wardstone? I had guessed as much. Many angels fought alongside us in the First Crusade. Heaven was unable to mobilize its full might to aid us, but individual Celestials volunteered to fight for our cause. Then one day, they all vanished, saying that they were setting off on an important mission. Not long after, Iomade's Herald erected the first Wardstone in Kenobris, and then the others in cities across Mendev. Even back then, I had nagging doubts, but my faith in Iomade easily assuaged them. It is for us to serve the goddess, after all, not to question her works. 
Nevertheless, I am pleased that you solved the mystery of the Wardstone in Kinobris and were able to save this gift of Iomade. It was a deed worthy of a Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. You should know that I received an unusual gift in the caves beneath Kinobris. In a vision, I saw the death of an angel, angel called Lariel. Somehow, he was able to grant me the ability to reveal the light of heaven. Lariel? I knew him. He disappeared shortly before the world wound grew, and Dresden fell into the enemy's hands. In the chaos, we had more important concerns than investigating the fate of a single angel. Even one so righteous and beloved as Lariel. And afterward, matters took a turn for the worse. The angels left us to go on their special mission. It is so strange to hear the names I used to hear when I was young. Like, getting a message from the past. It is sad news, but it brings me back to the times when we strongly believed in our victory, and we rushed headlong toward it without fear. Could it be that such times have come again? I have some questions about my mission to retake Dresden. Of course. I shall answer. How did the demons manage to conquer Dresden? That's a good question. Its walls were built by dwarf craftsmen, and the power of the Sword of Valor protected the city. Alas, where raging hordes failed, a single lying tongue was all they needed to succeed. The demoness Minago convinced a young and ambitious crusader named Staunton Vane that the banner belonged on the battlefield. He went on a daring and unapproved raid, and the banner ended up in the enemy's hands. The city fell soon after. Ever since then, for seven decades, it has served as a citadel for the forces of the Abyss. Staunton Vane. I saw him at the Grey Garrison. He defected to the demon's side. Oh, really? I wasn't informed of this. After Dresden fell because of Staunton, he was nearly sentenced to death. He deserved it. In wartime, men are hanged for far less. But you have no idea what a terrible sight it is. A raging crowd of crusaders baying for blood. Never have my fighters looked so much like the demons we are fighting. I commuted Staunton's sentence and stripped him of his rank. Not just for him, but for my army and my country. We are not Hell Knights. We do not maintain discipline with public executions. You shouldn't have stayed the Hand of Justice. If he had died, he wouldn't be betraying you again now. Justice was nowhere to be found that day. The army had become a mob, and the tribunal was a prelude to what that mob craved. Bloody carnage. I am the Queen of Mendev, and the leader of the Crusades. Justice served on my behalf cannot look like that. What forces are at my disposal? Everyone we saw today at the parade. First among them, the Eagle Watch, who remain a powerful force thanks to Erebeth's resourcefulness. Also marching with you are several minor knightly orders, as the minor volunteer units like to be called. And finally, I have personally selected some recruits from Nerosian. They have little in the way of battle experience, but great determination and a thirst to prove themselves. I've always thought that an army benefits from at least one such unit. These forces, as I said, are not enough for a march on Dresden. You will have to hire additional troops with the funds that have been provided to you. But for a brave commander, and I hope you are one, that is just the beginning. If you retake Dresden, recover the holy power of the Sword of Valor, and gain a foothold in the region, then new armies will join under your banner. The Fifth Crusade? is only beginning. Many battles and victories lie ahead. It has been decades and no one has managed to retake the city. Why do you think we are different? We have a chance now that we haven't seen in decades. But it's more than that. You created this chance for us by foiling the demon's plans in Canabris. The army who attacked the city came straight from Dresden. Demon hordes from the Abyss are usually encamped there, but many of them perished on the streets of Canabras. We must attack swiftly, before they can restore their forces. When the city is free and the Sword of Valor appears before our soldiers, they won't be sending in any more reinforcements. Demons cannot teleport into an area protected by the Banner of the Goddess. What about long-term goals? Do you know how to get rid of the World Wound forever? Now you are talking like a real knight, Commander. 
However, answering your question is not easy. To win this war, we must bar the demon's way. There are a few planar rifts leading to the abyss across the territory. We call the World Wound. The best specialists we could find have tried to close them on separate occasions. With no success, as you may have guessed. The World Wound is more than just a chain of portals to the abyss. We do not understand its nature yet. The methods of rift closure known to magical science simply do not work here. However, we have a hypothesis, and a rather well-grounded one, that we must begin at the source of the problem, the place where the world wound was opened. The main rift lies through the city of Iz and the Threshold Fortress, deep in the former lands of Sakoris. We have never managed to fight our way so far and gain a foothold to allow the mages to explore the origins of the world wound. So, the next step, after you succeed in Dresden, is an offensive push deeper into the world wound, with the aim of reaching threshold. The very threshold of the abyss. Wonderful. Overlooking a spot of insubordination just at the moment. However... I shall answer you. I shall prepare the defenses at Nerosian and all the other border cities and plan the future of the Fifth Crusade. Does that satisfy your curiosity, Knight Commander? Of course. Splendid. Ah, yes. We have one final matter to attend to. It should be rather enjoyable. Count, there you are. You received my instruction? I did, though I did not have time to read the thing before I was dragged before your majesty. In truth, I was readying myself to depart. No matter. I trust you will forgive your sovereign for the rather brusque summons, especially when you learn what prompted it. As you are aware, he has recently been appointed my Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. I spent a long while pondering whom to appoint to the highly sensitive post of Commander's Field Attaché and Advisor Plenipotentiary without portfolio. Congratulations, Count. It is a great honor, I suppose. A rather frivolous gesture for a queen. The adequacy of any measure can only be assessed against the reason that prompted it. Isn't that so, Count? I had my doubts about whether you were ready for such a responsibility, Count. But your conduct in Kenobris has put my mind at ease. So, you will travel with the troops to Dresden. Only the commander may remove you from your post. But I trust that you will dutifully fulfill his orders and make a good showing of yourself. Especially since word of your appointment, Count, will reach the court at any moment. All of Mendev's nobility will be following your successes in service to the nation, including all of your devoted admirers. I even heard that one bard with whom you are particularly friendly has already begun composing a ballad to honor your heroic participation in the crusade and your faithful service to the commander here. Your largesse truly knows no bounds, dear cousin. I am most, most gratified by the honor you have shown me. <laughs> then let's get going. May Ayomade help us. Yes, I'm sure he was extremely happy with that little uh, turn of events. Anevia sweeps an inquisitive glance over you. So, tell me straight, how'd that brawl at the Grey Garrison end? I heard the rumours, of course, that's kind of my job, you know, to listen. You've no idea what cobblers the Crusaders say about you. Some say that Iomede came to you and appointed you her herald. Others say that you died and that an honest-to-gods angel is now leaving the army disguised as you. Still, others say that it was just an explosion at an alchemist's lab and I'm the one spreading rumours about your powers. I wish! But, you know, you really have changed since the Grey Garrison. It's hard to describe, but you've become kind of... Anivia waves her hand, trying to find the word. Stronger? More dangerous. I have a gut instinct about these things. If I didn't, I'd already be dead. You are dangerous, Commander, and by Desna I hope you'll be dangerous to our enemies and not to us. 
or to yourself. And yeah, little do you know, those. Hundred and thirty gold. That's a decent amount of gold this early on in the game. Not much of interest in here, it would seem, but the 530 gold is definitely welcome. Okay, so we can rest in the tent. Um, I need to have a look at the uh, books that we have. Uh, read those. <laughs> Adventures of a Fearless Crusader, Briggy the Sausage Maker. Okay. Healer, that's the Pathfinder guy who uh, respects our character. We have read that one before. That one too seems familiar. Not sure about this one. Biography extract, sermon extract, and of course the unfinished letter that was in uh, inside of the uh, Grey Garrison. Right, that's that done with. Uh, let's put the uh, books and the papers inside this chest. And also the keys that we have. I may have sold a key that I shouldn't have sold, but I don't think it's a huge matter. I seem to recall that we had two different keys. Uh, these you should not put these into the uh, into the storage because it might break the, um, the quest lines. Just so you guys are aware of that. Although that one, I suspect we can get rid of at some point. Um, okay, now we we need to uh, to level up things. Uh, I will forgo the uh, conversation with Leoter and the conversation with Sociel. Uh, but I do think we need to talk to Darren. Uh, there you are. So how did you how do you like your new role, advisor? Darren Vinces. You also enjoy poking me with that stick, don't you? Imagine it, me, a crusader. If my dearest cousin hoped to teach me a lesson, she managed it perfectly. An assignment I couldn't avoid without losing face. This idiotic journey leading straight into the demon's moors. I could have been on a pleasure boat right now with the loveliest songstress in Pitax on my arm and a bottle of the finest Kionian wine to keep us company. Incidentally, I blame you for all this. Darren lets out a sigh. Well, actually, I think Cousin Galfrey is to blame for everything that's happened to me, and I suppose some of my misdeeds could be considered my own fault, but I can hardly be expected to take responsibility, can I? Certainly not. Therefore, I shall lay all the blame at your door and plot my revenge. He gives you an innocent smile. Did you also receive a fraction of that unusual power? Looks like it. I genuinely hoped that getting away from you would be the end of it. If your gift truly did come from my Omade, then giving me a smidgen of that power was a very subtle joke on her part. I had no idea that our divine lightbringer of Mendev even had a sense of humour. Don't get me started on my many acts of sacrilege against her. That obscene engraving of the truth about the test of the Starstone is the tamest one by far. Okay, we have to go into As the field medics be. tent because um, Vasily, uh, Visal, Visali, he sells an item that we need. This, the, the red salamander. Yes, it is expensive, but it is also extremely good. As you can see, if a, the wearer of this ring has the ability to cast spells spontaneously, which means cleric, oracle and a couple of other classes, it grants them the ability to cast the following spells. Fireball, Controlled Fireball, Fire Snake, Hellfire Ray, Firestorm and Fiery Body. Which are all very, very good spells. 
To cast a spell, the wearer still needs to have a spell slot of the required level. So we definitely need this uh, ring, and I'm going to use it on uh, Caledon for the time being, but I do have plans to use it on someone else, I think. Darren might have it. You can also get a second copy of this ring later on. So if you don't buy it here, you can get it later on, but if you buy it here, you can get two of them, which is definitely a benefit. This one is also good, but we don't have that much money to uh, wave around, so... Um, I don't think he has anything else that I want. Well, he has the recipe for the glowing croissant. We'll get that. Uh, so we'll go with that as a deal. And then we will equip the ring. Uh, I think we can forego the storyteller's ring. All right, now next thing we need to do then are four autumn hazes here as well. The elf before you casually rests his bandaged arm on the weapon at his side. He bows his head with dignity. I congratulate you on your new rank, Commander. My hunt demanded that I travel with your army. Naturally, I wouldn't burden your forces with the need to care for an outsider. I have provided myself with all the necessities. Let's pick up the uh, loot. There should be more loot around the camp now, actually, now that I think about it. But um, that is not far. what we want to do is uh, level up the characters. That is uh, kind of important. So, start with uh, Caladorn. Level 6, that'll give us access to level 3 spells, which is nice. Um, no. As for our level 3 spell, without a doubt, haste. And we don't need to consider fireball and so forth. We get that from, uh, from the ring now. Um, and that's going to be pleasant to have some actual damage coming from Caledon. Uh, then we need to level up Pips. And we can just go through and uh, level up our characters one by one. Uh, let me just find my papers. I have, uh, as you probably have already understood, based on hearing the paper that I'm working with, uh, already set up all of the character progressions uh, before I even started the... Uh, series uh because it is i don't want to spend a lot of time uh during the playthrough uh on what is best to pick uh, since there is well a lot of stuff to pick um so the first level of mythic here is ever ready And her horse, called Milana. Then we have Nenio. Let's see here. Nenio is supposed to be. He's going to continue being a wizard. As for her spells, uh, Haste and Fireball, I've already taken those, so Stinking Cloud. It isn't the best spell later on, uh, but it is good versus human opponents. Not that I'm going to use Neneo that much, but um, I think I'm going to take Sea Invisibility Communal and Displacement, to be honest. Next up, after Nenio, well, we have our mythic level as well. Uh, I suspect that that's going to be abundant casting. Uh, we have Ember. Ember is going to continue on the path of a witch, and she wants to have the ability. Okay, now. Uh, we need Cackle. As for level 3 spell, hmm. Not entirely sure about that. Maybe cure serious wounds? 
Deep Slumber is also pretty nice against humanoid enemies. Now we'll take Cure Serious Wounds. Um, she won't be in the party except for when we need to do uh, specific missions with her, but uh, it's still kind of uh, important to level the characters up in a somewhat sensible fashion so that they actually uh, that that you actually can make use of them that rings even more true if you're playing on um, core or unfair of course uh, second spirit and we to have stone. Okay, next up is Darren. And Darren, level 6 Oracle, of course, he's going to be a pure Oracle. As for his first level 3 spell, we're going to take Prayer. Then we have our good old brown fur transmuter, fun fix. Level 6 here is uh, still brown fur transmuter. As for the spells, we want haste and greater magic weapon. Then we have Lan. Lan should continue on uh, his Divine Hound Hunter path. Two, three, four. I wonder if it might be a better idea to do that. Or even that. I think I'll do that, actually. His spell at level 6 will be Cat's Grace. That also means we get to level up uh, better up. We have all these animal companions with athletics, so that's why I'm not that worried about his uh, athletics skill. Then we do have Waldriff, of course. Um, level 6 here is Vivisectionist. Apparently I've forgotten to written down this, to write down this level. No idea why. What animal aspect? And we want blur. I think that was it. No, Sila, of course. Uh, she's going to be leveled up exactly the same as uh, our the, the, the paladin mercenary that I built, um, with one exception. Uh, the, is that she has different um, base feats that she started out with. Um, namely, uh, shield, focus, and something else that I can't remember off the top of my head. Shield, focus, and what was the other one? Dodge. Dodge isn't a bad one. Shield, focus, nah, meh. I mean, you can use Seal as a pretty good companion, and I would have been using her as well if it weren't for the fact that he's going to leave us. You know. Okay, I'm going to do some selling, so let me just pause the recording while I do that. There we go. There's a mysterious elf over here. Damn it! You again, soldier. And she disappears. What can I do for you? I saw you talking to the girl hiding her face. Who was she and what did she want? I don't know, Commander. She never introduced herself, but I bet she's not a part of our army. I know all of our soldiers by name and by sight. That sounds like we do not have a very big army. Wilsa frowns gloomily, his cordiality gone in an instant. He was looking for some elf volunteer. I wanted to know which tent he was sleeping in. At first, I thought she was a messenger for Mendev. She definitely wasn't one of us. But now I see how it looks all mighty shifty. The quartermaster eyes you with concern. She was some sort of spy then. 
Um, so I'm going to sell a little bit more here at uh, at his. Um, don't need a great axe. We don't need a bulky pick. We don't need a dark glowing scythe. We don't need the flail of light burst. Definitely don't need the mordant war axe. If you want radiance to become a good weapon, uh, keep it in your inventory at all times. Uh, that might be a decent offhand uh, or a second weapon for someone to have. That one too. So I'm going to keep the uh, the collapse and the melody. Uh, these, however, I'm not really that convinced about them. No. As for armor, I'm going to sell this padded armor of focus. We have a half plate of vigor, which actually might be decent to put on um, one of our paladins. And these I'm going to keep. And that's it. Back up to 42,000. Do you have anything interesting? No, it appear you do. At least not in a sensible ice range. That one is interesting. Would have been decent to have on uh, on Siva. Uh, if he had a good falcon, that would also be, he does have. He has. Oh, he has Jinx, which is very, very, very good in an unfair group, as you will want to have uh, Ember uh, and someone wearing uh, wielding Jinx, but I'm not Ember, so... Yeah, no, I think that we are good on the other items here. Wait, I didn't get Social into the group. I did, he's there. Okay. Right. Um, Socio is, for most things, a better choice to take along than Darren, especially if you're playing at higher difficulties, because even though he has less spells, um, he doesn't he have mythic level? That's weird. What you want to do with Social, we'll get back to that. You'll see when I build him up, because I, I'm going to build him up, because I know that I'm going to have to use him in certain situations where Darren might not be quite up to the task. Um, but basically what you do with Social is that you build him with um, additional domains, a plenty, like four or five additional domains, so that he has access to a whole ton of different spells um, and then with the abundant spell casting you can get a pretty good punch out of social both in regards to buffs and uh, and um, and in addition to that also uh, raw damage um, and his stats is actually for uh, for one of the uh, pre-built characters that you gain as companions. It's pretty good. Uh, he's very well balanced in terms of stats. Uh, this is quite similar to how I would have... I had been giving this kind of point allotment. I might have taken away two points in constitution and put that into dexterity. Um, but this is this is decent. This is a decent good build. Okay, now we need to... I will have an episode where I go around and talk to the people inside here. So I haven't really done much except for talking to the Queen in this episode, but this is kind of the main story, so this is going to be a main episode. That party is truly very acceptable. So we have this one army here with a hundred footmen. And that's basically what we have currently. Um, 
what I'm going to do is exactly what I said I was going to do. I'm going to use uh, toy box to make this army a lot more powerful than it should be. Uh, I will get these archers into the army. Oh, it made Crusader Army 2. Of course it does, because... Because uh, these are recruited at Canabras. To sign a general, we want to have Soraviel even missed, I think, because she is Master of Maneuver. We have zero. Okay, so we can't assign a general just yet. Let's merge these, uh, preferably into army number one. And we can have up to three units in the army. So we'll put that guy there and then we'll do this. That. We'll go into toy box. Uh, crusade, no armies. This is our current army. Set the infantry to 500 and we'll set the archers each to 500. Not 5,000, we don't need that. We will need that later on, but for now, let's keep it a little bit realistic at least. And close. This basically means that we can just attack things and they'll die because you can see this this army over here for instance 15 and 5 uh, so yes this is outrageous cheating on my part but um, I really detest the crusade system I would have put it on auto but I cannot because there are certain items that we are going to want to uh, to loot which we will get from the crusade you can see how many like 3,000, 700, 4,000, 2,400. It's, uh, we are going to one-shot most things. Okay, then we can recruit a general. So we shall recruit a general. Oh, it changed. Okay. That's a bit annoying. Um, this is decent, but I think we'll take the Baroness then, perhaps? Yeah, we'll take the Baroness, plus two bonus to damage per level on the feet. We can pick up the uh, Master of Maneuvers trait later on. Ah, we just made it. Good, good, good. Yeah, Brimorax. Like so. Crusaders stumbled upon a group of ragged, ragged and exhausted scouts. They had set out on a patrol mission deep into the world wound, but then, when Canabras was attacked, they found themselves cut off and surrounded by demons. Surviving in such hostile conditions was not easy, but the scouts' spirits remained high and they readily joined the commander's forces. 750 finance points, very good. That means we get rangers, which are better than archers, I think. 1d6 plus 5, so 6 to 11. 13 to 20, yeah, these are much better. Uh, we want to have two armies, so... I will do the same with this army. I will pull that over there. How can this be 4 when the other one was... Three? to new general again because we are up to 2000 and we'll take Setsuna Shai as the general for this army. Oh it costs 2000. I can't afford it yet. And we'll go into toy box again. Crusader army 2. 
Now we want to add squads here. Uh, Paladin, Infantry and Archer. We will just add uh, an Infantry uh, unit and we'll add an Archer unit. 1000 is a tad overpowered. Uh, let's go with uh, 500, not 1000. Probably have set this to that close and I don't know where the footman came from. Oh, of course I do. And we'll arrange them like that. Actually, I think I can do this. Do the same with this army. This is the front line, this is the back line, obviously. Okay, so this army we can send... This is a fortress, by the way. Um, you can sneak past regular demon armies with your um, uh, with the party, but you cannot sneak past a fortress. So you need to capture the fortress before you can do that. Uh, this army we will send north, I think. Yeah, 20,000 damage. It's going to be ridiculous, but again, I don't really care. I want to enjoy the story. I don't want to mess out with the, this. I suppose I could read these, but it's not that much interest into that. So you can read that yourself if you're interested. This army has a general. I doubt he will be able to do anything though. Nope. Which is good because sometimes they cast fireballs and crap like that. Daily income increased. That is nice. Elementals are quite powerful, but won't help them much. That is very loud. Here we found one of those items. I don't know if we would we would get this item if I had put it on automatic. I think we would, but there are some other things, which is the reason for the not auto, uh, except uh, these pure items. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Back. That basically means that we have uh, these two armies left on this side of the uh, West Selen River. And other than that, um, we need to take the fortress before we can get over to the other side. Now, I think I'll go back into the camp. And we'll end the episode here. And in the, the next episode... No, that, that's not the camp. That is the uh, city of uh, Canabras. We can't do anything here. We need to go to the Crusader camp. Uh, so I'll go back to the Crusader camp, and in the Crusader camp we'll do the conversations with, uh, particularly Sociel, who will give us um, a mission that we need to do, uh, and uh, we need to bring him for that specific mission as well. And then the other conversations there, um, so that'll be a dot one episode, and then in the episode after that we should be uh, going out and uh, do Sociel's mission and start doing the uh, points of interest on the map before we continue onwards towards Dresden. If you do have any questions or comments, as per usual, please feel free to leave those in the comment section. For now, thank you all so very much for joining me, and I shall be seeing you all in the next episode.